Hey guys, Michael Sherp here and today we're gonna talk about front-end development tools for WordPress. So the goal of this talk is essentially to send you on a journey and I literally mean that because when I started out and when I learned most of these tools I didn't know they existed and I very often had a certain problem or a certain task that was repeating over and over again and it just took me three times as long as it takes nowadays. And very often you don't even know that there's a solution unless somebody tells you. So a lot of the stuff I'm, a, I'm about to tell you, you may already know, you may be very familiar with it already, or this is completely new to you, in which case it's great because this means there's a good chance you'll be more efficient in the future. I am gonna talk about the solutions I found for myself. This doesn't mean that this is the correct way or the only way. This just is what works for me and what I'm doing right now. If you have a different solution or you think there's a better solution out there, please feel free to share it. There's, yeah, you never stop learning and I would love to see something else and learn that. I mean, anything that makes my day easier, please share that. The process we're gonna do is essentially, we're gonna go always through three steps. The first one is we're gonna discuss a general problem. Then we're gonna quickly analyze the solution. However, I, I won't really have the time to go into too much detail. I, I really can't discuss everything. So I'm just gonna go fairly quickly over everything. And we're gonna very quickly also talk about alternatives because there are always several and it's important maybe to, to at least see what the alternatives are. Okay, the first choice you'll probably have is your operating system. But before I go into that talk, I actually wanna go through all the other slides. So we're gonna start out with your text editor. And obviously the goal here is you want to be in an environment where you are as fast and as efficient as humanly possible because every second you, you take extra to do something that you do all the time is the second you lose. I mean, obviously very clear. So my choice right now is Sublime Text and that's what I really like to use. There's just so many features. It's so lightning fast. The search is amazingly awesome. And that's my choice. I mean, there's obviously lots of pros and cons against it. A few alternatives. I think if I were to switch, I would probably go with Vim or something like PHP Storm, uh, a full blown IDE. Um, other alternatives are is like Notepad or Komodo, which I used in the past, and then Mac specific TextMate and Coda. Uh, this is literally a talk where, I don't know, you could probably do 20 videos about this and you still won't really know which one you want to prefer because each and every single one of them ha has their benefits and obviously their drawbacks. So the next choice you'll have is a local environment. And here it's very clear if, if you're always working on a server and you don't have a local environment like pulling and pushing files all the time, waiting until they're there, pushing up images, whatever, do changes. It's just so much slower. Plus you always need an internet connection. I mean, what if you wanted to work without an internet connection? You just can't if you need to access a server. So the solution I have, and I'm here on a Mac, is MAMP. Um, if you are on a Mac, there's also desktop server. I believe this works almost anywhere. And then also PC, you have VAMP and XAMP. I mean, I feel like almost all of them are very similar. Um, depending on, on what you exactly need, maybe you wanna go with, um, with a commercial solution. Okay, the next one is a really big one, and this is version control. I hope by now you are doing some sort of version control. I remember when I started to code, I was just attaching numbers to my files. So I was having index, op, index dot or underscore 001 dot PHP. 
And yeah, I just kept doing that. So at the end I was having index underscore 028.php. And if I wanted to go back, well, I had to go back. At least I was smart enough to keep a log file. So I was logging essentially the changes and it was somewhat easy to go back. However, of course, that's not really a, a feasible solution on bigger projects. I mean, you, you'll just have 27,000 files and from those you only need 15 because you're just having versions after versions after versions. Plus also collaborating that way is basically impossible. I mean, you, you can't work on the same code at the same time. and it, and I mean, the need for version control comes in very quickly as soon as you, as you try to collaborate or you try and work from multiple locations, let's just say from your laptop and your desktop. It's just impossible to keep the file sync if you use this primitive version control. Anyway, there's probably a million other reasons why you should use version control. And let me tell you, once you start using it, it gets very natural and it, it isn't as scary as, as it looks at first. And the solution I use is Git. I, I really like it and I use it all the time right now, especially with Git, you get access to GitHub and Bitbucket and stuff like that. And you're pushing and pulling code and you're merging stuff. And at some point it gets very natural. The alternative here would be subversion. That's essentially what WordPress uses, but I think it is far superior. And I think if WordPress was gonna, yeah, make the, choice again which version control i would say they would switch all right this has been the first part out of three discussing the front end development tools for wordpress please make sure you check out the other two parts if you want to connect with me you can do so on my website at shrimp.com or follow me on twitter or check out my google plus or facebook page all right guys see you next time Let's <laughs> go.